At the foot of the Bernese High Alps lies a tropical paradise, the Tropenhaus Frutigen, a tropical greenhouse. Situated a mere 40 minutes from Switzerland's capital Bern, between Lake Thun and Adelboden, the Tropenhaus plays a leading role in the utilization of renewable energies, combining landscape, ecology and economy in an exemplary way. Due to the construction of the Lurchberg base tunnel, rain and meltwater no longer have the possibility to drain away. This is why around 70 litres of approximately 18 degrees warm mountain water flow out of the northern portal of the tunnel per second. This amount of warm water cannot be simply diverted into the mountain streams like the Engstliger, as this would damage the ascent water and spawning grounds of the native lake trout. For this reason, an alternative option for cooling the mountain water was sought. The idea was impressively simple. The excessive heat from the tunnel's mountain water could be utilized for farming fish and cultivating plants that both prefer a warm climate. With this, expensive and energy-intensive cooling of the water could be avoided, while at the same time ensuring a sensible and sustainable use of thermal energy. And from this idea originated the Tropenhaus Frutigen. The combination of a tropical atmosphere, aquaculture and alpine surroundings is unique worldwide. The region where the Tropenhaus Frutigen was built once featured a tropical climate, to which the fossilized ferns found by the Lurchberg tunnel builders bear witness. These fossils date back to 250 to 300 million years ago and are thus about the same age as the ancestors of today's sturgeons. So by building the Tropenhaus, we have come full circle again. 70 litres of warm water are diverted from the Lurchberg base tunnel to the Tropenhaus per second. Thanks to its purity, the warm mountain water is excellently suited for farming sturgeons and can be diverted directly into the fish basins without preliminary treatment. After its utilization for fish farming, the water is conveyed into a heat exchanger which extracts parts of the thermal energy of the mountain water and feeds it into two large heat pumps. These are to heat the adjacent buildings, especially the greenhouse. The mountain water, which is cooled down and purified, can then be safely diverted into the river Engstliger. The utilization of mountain water from the base tunnel is extremely useful and innovative, both in terms of energy and ecology. There are synergies arising from the multiple use of the mountain water, both for the Tropenhaus and the external buildings forming part of the district heating system. This is why the Tropenhaus features a pleasant climate, even when outside temperatures are very low. Tropical fruits and exotic flowers thrive under ideal conditions. Impressive sturgeons swim about in the basins. The way in which caviar is produced and processed is decisive for the quality of this superior product. Everything is done manually to respect the peculiarities of this natural product. The way to perfect caviar pearls starts with breeding. Fingerlings develop from fertilized eggs in hatcheries. At the age of a few months, the vital fingerlings are put into basins. Sorting the fish is important in order to prevent the fish from growing apart, or in other words, to prevent larger and smaller fish from swimming in the same basin. Otherwise, it can happen that the small fish get less and less food and fail to thrive. So the basins are sorted every three to four months to ensure an equal size of the fish. After approximately three years, the fish are separated into male and female groups. The sex of young fish is determined with the aid of an ultrasonic device. Prior to sex determination, the fish need to have an empty stomach. Feeding is suspended for two days. Then they are caught with a net and put into another tank to be sedated. Afterwards, the fish are brought onto the examination table where an ultrasonic device is used to determine the sex. This requires only a few moments and then the male and female fish are put into their respective basins. 
Weibchen gehen in den Bottich rein und die Männchen gehen in den Bottich rein. The fish are looked after by trained staff around the clock. Several times a day, they receive an exactly calculated amount of food, with animal welfare taking top priority. The most important thing about feeding the fish is an individual diet. Spreading feeding rations across the entire day guarantees that the fish will receive continuously adjusted, small quantities of food. Regular inspection and electronic surveillance of technical installations ensure a sustainable operation. Laboratory work is mainly about checking water values and measuring the oxygen content and temperature. This provides information about the reaction of the fish if the values aren't in the standard range and give us the possibility to take the necessary measures. While male fish are processed at the age of three years, the fish farmer carefully checks the maturity of the eggs of female fish at the age of six years using an ultrasonic device. This then determines the time of slaughtering. Depending on the findings during this examination, the fish will be either put back into the fattening basins or on to the storage tanks. The procedure for producing caviar is the same as for determining the sex. The fish are caught with a net and put into the sedation tank and are then brought onto the examination table. By means of ultrasound, we then determine whether the eggs already are the right size for caviar production or whether we have to wait for another while. The fish ready for slaughter are purified by reducing the amount of food. This has a substantial effect on the quality of the meat. With regards to slaughtering, sturgeons are stunned and killed properly. Immediately after slaughtering, the fish are processed at the Tropenhaus's own facilities. The fish do not only provide caviar, but their meat is used to make sturgeon fillets of various kinds at our own facilities. A special delicacy is smoked sturgeon, seasoned with pepper, chili or ginger, for example. The various steps in producing and processing caviar are carried out carefully, meeting the most stringent quality and hygiene requirements. The belly is cleaned and disinfected, then it is opened to remove the gonads containing the roe. The caviar pearls are freed from tissue by passing them through a sieve. The pearls are then cleaned in cold water, which is followed by meticulous fine cleaning using tweezers. The yet untreated caviar is matte and slightly floury in taste. Now the caviar expert assesses the quality of the caviar. After draining the raw caviar, its appearance is examined. What color is it? Are there any eyes on the eggs? The second step is an organoleptic test. Is the pearl firm? Does it burst quickly in the mouth? What does it taste like? Is there a nutty flavor which is highly sought after? All this also influences the amount of salt that is added. By adding salt to the caviar, the pearls get their characteristic shine. 
Moderate salting is part of the refinement of the caviar, thus bringing out its flavor and keeping it fresh. Subsequently, the caviar is hermetically sealed. The names of local rivers indicate that the region had once been settled in by the early Celts. This is why the first caviar produced in Switzerland was called Una, a word derived from the Celtic language describing something unique and exceptional. The black sphere symbolizing a caviar pearl contains a refined cooling system and is enclosed by the so-called ice cube. Manufactured from clear glass in Switzerland, the cube symbolizes the transparency of the company and the purity of the product. Each ice cube is unique, featuring its very own special character. The entire process from opening the fish to canning it takes only 15 minutes, which ensures absolute freshness and premium quality. The philosophy of the Tropenhaus is reflected in its own two restaurants, Terrasserie and Una, the restaurant. There, guests are carried away on a culinary voyage of discovery. The sturgeon meat and tropical fruit produced at the Tropenhaus are transformed by the kitchen staff into fresh, seasonal meals with an authentic taste. The Tropenhaus Frutigen is an attractive, exciting excursion destination and tourist attraction in the Bernese Oberland for individuals, groups, connoisseurs and anyone curious. There is something for everyone. The Tropenhaus Frutigen addresses questions that are of great relevance to humanity and that are to take a central role in our world in the future. Sustainability, a deep attachment to the region and transformation of natural resources into refined products. All this and even more is offered by the Tropenhaus Frutigen.